Imagine the scene. You're a technology director and you're providing the monthly update to the executive board of your company. The usual finance, project updates, service updates and the new initiatives are being discussed. After the regular interruptions and questions, five minutes before the next agenda item, you ask, any questions? In retrospect, you wish you hadn't asked and you made a quick escape for the door. The CFO pipes up and asks, what about AI? Suppressing the immediate knee-jerk response, thinking, what about it? You offer, it's an emerging technology that we need to investigate. There are risks associated with it and opportunities. Now, in the back of your mind, you're scrambling to remember the key points from a Gartner report you downloaded last week. And what are they? Asked the CFO. You reply, specifically for our line of business, we've yet to investigate. You can prioritise that, but must drop another feasibility study to fit it in. If I can bring in some consultants to advise, that will impact our budget line. How would you like to proceed? Well, Nicely played. But now you've got the task of coming up with some research for AI on your business. So how do you stay on the front foot? Wouldn't it have been better to preempt this situation before being prodded in front of the board? I'm John, and this is part of a series of short articles called Tales from a Portfolio Manager. I help people in corporates plan technology across teams. You could be someone who has a technology portfolio of clients, projects, services, or a backlog of features and you have to manage them across a wide variety of teams to achieve any number of goals. I've been doing these roles for over 20 years for many corporates, and I have a few tales to tell. Best thing I can do for you is to encapsulate that experience into my advisory, online training, and coaching so that you have the opportunity to reflect on how you can solve some pretty challenging issues that you come across and be more successful in your technology role. If you like the content, you can subscribe for a free two-week trial of our online courses at the side here. Thank you to those who've already subscribed, and I look forward to speaking to you soon. It's very tough to extricate your team from the technology that, that only seems to increase. Diffuse the latest crisis and keep pace with the overwhelming and constant demand for transformation in the organization when the industry beneath your feet is changing at an ever-increasing rate. I seek to give you eight key enablers that allows you to have the impact assessment right when needed, so you are prepared when the executives ask you about a topic. Why is this so important? Being a strategic partner across the digital and business domains requires innovation. Innovation is curating ideas and presenting options, and selecting the best candidates to move forward into development. First thing I teach in my strategy management course is the mindset, attitudes, and behaviors you need to operate in this space. But you do not operate alone or act as a stepping stone in a broader corporate process. Being a strategic partner means being part of a broader innovation ecosystem within your organization. Suppose the organization is serious about responding to emerging environmental threats and opportunities. In that case, this in innovation capability will provide your organization with its competitive advantage for years to come. And that's the point of strategic digital business partnerships. So what do you need? You need clear strategic business outcomes. Fundamentally, you need to be able to articulate how your team adds value to the rest of the organization. As mentioned, Shared outcomes and strategy on the page, we call it SOAP, and there's a link in the description to these other podcasts, can help you do this. The key is to align your company's business objectives and your team's activities. You can modify the capabilities and processes that enable organizational change on this canvas. Secondly, you need to fund innovation time. Your team will already be focused on existing platforms and business capabilities where you leverage product managers or business analysts to make tweaks. But what about emerging trends, wholly new capabilities or the unknown? If your business is in a rapidly evolving industry or commercial context, it is at risk of being displaced. You can help your executive committee understand the only way to mitigate that risk is by funding additional innovation time. New people or team members time can be allocated to this activity. The short-term fix may be to reduce the pipeline of feasibility studies on existing capabilities to provide that extra space for new ones. 
Thirdly, you need to enable a sense of excellence. What do I mean by this? Helping people understand how to innovate through coaching and facilitated workshops by experienced innovators helps enormously. Great ideas are formed through discussion with people with different ways of expressing their thoughts and sharing their perspectives on challenges and their experiences. Facilitate rotating team members and provide opportunities for all employees to participate. Curate and nurture a culturally safe space where they're free to think aloud. If these innovators are employed full time, they can lead a center of excellence and help pass on the innovation baton throughout the rest of the organization. Fourthly, you can encourage a creative and curious mindset through games and coaching. Whilst having an ideas email address and a prize, door, prize draw voucher at the end of the month is one way to solicit ideas, their quality is directly proportional to your team's ability to think outside the box. The ability to think creatively can be for everyone. It's not just a natural talent. So helping people discover how to ask the right questions, explore unknowns, experiment, and take risks are behaviors that can be nurtured. Hackathons are a fantastic event-based way to encourage this. There is a resource that I follow in the description below. The fifth element is being able to give your team the tools and the freedom to explore. This could be, for example, providing a laboratory environment with access to new tools or platforms to experiment with. And this can go a long way to turbocharge that idea generation. An example is badfoundation.org. Again, there's a link in the description below where they provide a template and a framework for physical and digital product development. Literally, it's a space where there are different tools, machines, and uh, creative spaces to allow a team to either work independently or together. The sixth aspect um, is the idea of creating a backlog of ideas and an innovation pipeline. The same techniques that apply to agile sprints can be used in innovation. Scale the work you do to the capacity you have. Make sure that each of the activities you create can be time bound, such as two weeks, and focus on the pain points in your organization. Prioritize those pain points according to the threats and opportunities you have uh, in your environmental context or, or strategy. Ensure a clear outcome for each activity. What are the hypotheses that you are testing for? The seventh aspect is to fail fast and learn lessons faster. Now, the key outcome of the innovation process is the lessons learned. This outcome contradicts the return on investments and revenue metrics we typically apply. Still, with the innovation process, you will have the options, candidates, and new potential products to choose from. In addition, each time you disqualify an idea or invalidate a hypothesis, you generate a lesson learned for every new product or service. In fact, you may have 30 failed experiments, each of which gives a lesson for only one product that you migrate forwards. The cost of that lesson learned at this stage of the process is far less than the cost of, say, promoting a poorly designed product push through the development and implementation stages, only to find out that it will never generate the revenue desired afterwards. And finally, the eighth element is to communicate the results. This is the proof in the pudding. And now you're pre-armed and ready to tackle the off-the-cuff questions about new technologies from your business, sponsors, executives on the board, and provide that impact assessment. One way to share this is to regularly offer something called, say, an insight on a page. It's effectively a, a blog post or a short article that shows an audience how an emerging technology can be applied to a specific pain point in the company and some of the lessons learned as a result of the processes you've done previously. This hugely informative and value-adding narrative helps the board direct the company and navigate its competitive environment. So there you have it. I talk a lot about these concepts in the strategic management and portfolio management courses that I offer online. Feel free to click the links to subscribe for a free two-week trial. And stay tuned for the next episode of Tales from a Portfolio Manager. Thank you. 
This article is sponsored by sdbp.institute, an online training and coaching platform that enables participants to become strategic digital business partners. In just four months, with a two to three hour a week commitment, teams and individuals can demonstrate value and gain confidence through practicing the tools and techniques that help people collaborate on technology roadmaps across teams. Whilst giving a foundation understanding of relationships, customer value and alignment, the courses can help participants drive results for themselves, their teams and their organization. One client said, our stakeholders have started to trust us more based on better expectation management and small incremental improvements through applying the principles and approaches taught in the course. It gave fantastic insight. Many organizations and individuals have benefited from the instruction given on our platform. So you can go to sdbp.institute and see how you and your team can gain a certificate in strategic digital business partnering or contact us for bespoke corporate training.